Ms. Liliana Paliovici, welcome to our Parliamentary Assembly Media Box platform. Uh, you have a report on parliamentary immunity. Yes. And uh, as we see in the title, you mentioned the challenge to the scope of the privileges and immunities enjoyed by members of the Parliamentary Assembly. Let's start with the main objective of the report. What would you like to mention firstly in the report? What's the aim of the report? Um, Thank you for the invitation uh, here and for uh, the idea to discuss on my report. It's a very important one and the issue was not debated in the Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe uh, since 2003 and from that moment a lot of changes uh, were in the legislations of the countries, members of the Council of Europe and uh, there are different uh, proposals even from the Denise Commission regarding the or recommendations to the national government on a modification of uh, the national legislation on uh, the immunity, parliamentary immunity. And uh, uh, there are different opinions how to understand this Im immunity. And uh, in this report, uh, um, I try to explain what the parliamentary immunity is and what it covers and what means non-liability and how it is applied in the country members of the Council of Europe and what means inviolability and uh, which are the countries where there are these two forms of the immunity and where there are uh, only non-liability without inviolability. Uh, this report, uh, report include, um, uh, inform includes information about uh, countries which are members of the Council of Europe and the changes which were done by these countries in the last uh, 13 years. I have sent uh, questionnaires to, uh, to the country members of the Council of Europe, to the parliamentary delegation, um, uh, requesting the information on the modification of the legislation. Um, besides this, we have um, involved the Parliamentary Research Center in, in the process of collecting the information. We had organizing on the platform of the uh, Committee on Rules and Procedures an um, uh, hearing on the immunity with the experts of the uh, Venice Commission, better to understand which are the tendencies and which should be the recommendations of the Parliamentary Assembly to the country members of the Council of Europe. And um, uh, also, uh, I have analyzed not just the uh, aspect of national legislations of the country members uh, towards uh, uh, immunity, parliamentary immunity. I have analyzed also the immunity which uh, members of the parliamentary assembly and the, of the European Parliament have at the European level, mm -hmm. and which are the differences. I have pointed the cases when uh, uh, and why uh, some countries need to, uh, to keep provisions on uh, um, parliamentary immunities. We uh, have no uh, uh, concerns about the, the, the uh, protections of members of the parliament in their um, uh, activity in the countries with all democracies, but the information which we have received makes us to come with some concerns regarding the new democracies where we cannot speak about, about strong judicial systems and uh, there are different attempts to influence in different ways and to put pressures on MPs, especially on those who are from um, uh, small parties or from opposition. Maybe in this context, in this context it's good to remind one more time uh, that uh, your understanding uh, and your definition on the parliamentary immunity that you also mentioned in the report, because as if we understood well, there are different uh, interpretation of this immunity. It's so what, uh, how you call the parliamentary immunity and what are the general principles for that? Uh, we cannot put uh, all countries on, under one definition because sure. there is a, a difference uh, and this difference is coming from the political history of each country and from the development of each country. But we have to mention that there are countries uh, in the Council of Europe which do not have any type of uh, parliamentary immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have countries which have um, a limited immunity and uh, it uh, it's about uh, 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 it's a type of non-liability. This means that a, a member of the parliament cannot be uh, uh, punished for any declarations which uh, he or she did in the parliament in during his uh, or her mandate, or it cannot be uh, also um, uh, um, 
punished for any votes which uh, um, he or she had uh, during his uh, mandate. And we have countries, members of the Council of Europe, which have a full or a total immunity, including no liability and also inviolability, when any penal cases and uh, actions cannot be taken against one MP um, till uh, the vote of the parliament or uh, without the acceptance of the parliament on doing this. Or there are some exceptions when there is a final um, um, conviction and uh, uh, when it's, uh, um, when we speak about um, and um, um, the, the person who uh, have been uh, caught coming an offence, uh, um, in this case, uh, the, uh, the inviolability doesn't work. Um, it should be understand also from this, uh, the resolution of this uh, report that we <coughs> uh, cannot give one receipt for all, one solution for all countries. This is a very sensitive issue and should be analyzed, um, uh, taking into account the um, development of the democracy in each country. And uh, in this way, the Council of Europe, the Parliamentary uh, Assembly of Council of Europe, should monitor this issue and should monitor permanent modification to the um, national legislation regarding the immu parliamentary immunity. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Pleasure. Bartor. Thank you.